Hello everyone, Marco Cipetta for Hot Hardware here to talk about Network Attached Storage. So Network Attached Storage, or NAS, is one of the most useful things you can add to almost any multi-user environment, whether it be in a home, an office, whatever. But it's also something that confuses the heck out of lots of folks. So I've got a brand new Terramaster F4 422 4 bay NAS here. I've got a stack of really nice 14 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf hard drives. I figured I'd build up the server, get it all set up and working, and show everyone just how easy it is to have your own personal cloud. Next. So before we get on with the actual build, I figured I'd show you all some of the hardware up close and personal. This is one of the Seagate Iron Wolf Pro 14 terabyte hard drives. Not much to see other than that cool decal. These guys use the standard three and a half inch form factor. You can see the SATA data and power connectors right there. Now these drives are designed for use in a NAS and right next to the drives, we have the Terramaster F4 422. Now, as the name implies, this is a four bay NAS. You can see some uh, status and activity LEDs here next to the power button. And the drives, they just install on these trays, which snap right out and slide out of the bays just like that. On the back of the F4 422, you can see a couple of cooling fans. There is a notch for an HDMI port. Terramaster does sell models that can play media directly out to a display. Um, this particular guy though has two USB 3 ports, two gigabit LAN ports, and a single 10 gigabit LAN port. Gonna have to upgrade my network to take advantage of that. And right at the bottom is just a standard DC power jack. Terramaster includes a bunch of stuff with the F4422. So of course you have the obligatory warranty card, quick installation guide. There's even some stickers for labeling your hard drives. It also includes an ethernet cable, the obligatory power brick, just a standard you know, DC power brick right there. It includes screws for two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives. And there's even some replacement rubber feet. There's four on the bottom of the device already, but they include two replacements in case you need them. Building up the NAS and installing the drives couldn't be easier. I actually forgot to mention that Terramaster also included a Phillips head screwdriver, pretty cool. So to get the drives installed super easy, we're gonna pop out these bays individually and we're literally just going to install the drives into them and screw them into place. Now you want the SATA connectors facing the bottom of the tray and the back of the NAS server. If the drive is oriented any other way, it's not gonna to connect to the back plane and it's just not gonna work properly. So I've got the drive in the tray properly. You can see the SATA connectors right here. You just wanna kinda of slide it forward just a tad to line up the four screw holes right in the bottom. And I'm just gonna put the included screws right in. Okay, you saw how easy that was. Then the drive literally just slides right in and snaps into place. I'm going to do that three more times. So all of the trays are assembled with drives. I am just snapping them into place. And at this point, we're ready to plug this into the network, give it power and get everything configured. So you have a couple of options when connecting a device like this to your network. I'm going to go for the simplest option in my setup. I'm simply going to connect a single cable from one of the LAN ports to my network switch in my server closet. But you can connect them both and set up bonding or failover support. There's also this 10 gigabit connection here. Now my computer does have a 10 gigabit NIC installed, but my switch does not support 10 gig E, so I will not get that speed even if I use this port until I upgrade my switch. But for now, we're gonna go super simple. All you have to do to attach this to a network is plug in a ethernet cable from one of the LAN ports to your switch or an open port on your router, what have you. So the initial setup process is definitely the hardest part about configuring your NAS. This particular Terramaster F4422, you have to run through a multi-step process. First, you have to download this TNAS PC app, which will scan your network and find the network attached server. So I've done that already, and I configured my IP address. You can see it here. You can see the device's MAC address here. And then the first time you set it up, you're gonna click this login button. And it's going to pop open a browser and you'll have to log in the default username and password or admin and then it brings you to an initialization screen where you jump through a couple of hoops it just basically checks that the hard drives are okay 
And then it brings you here to this screen where it says install TOS. That is the operating system for the NAS. So to get that, you just have to hop over to the TerraMaster website. I looked up the F4422 and I grabbed the latest TOS installation, the one labeled for new TNAS device TOS installation version 4208. I downloaded that. It was about 190 megabytes. I have that on my desktop. So now from this screen here, I'm going to hit browse. I'm going to grab that file, hit open. And I assume when I hit next, it's going to start installing the OS. And it looks like it's working. Hope I didn't screw anything up. I guess we're going to know in just a few moments. Now I hear the hard drives spinning up in the device. I have it next to me. I didn't stick it in my server closet yet. I just plugged it into the network using a cable I have right here. Now it says it can take up to 10 minutes, so I'm just gonna stop and then I'll pick it up when this process is done. So the TOS installation worked properly and then it came up to this screen to restart the TNAS on its own. It's counting down the restart process should take about three minutes. Once that's done, I will kick the camera back on and show you where we are. So after the NAS restarted, I was brought here to the uh, initialization wizard. So this is where you're going to name the NAS, set your own personal password, set your time zone, set your email for security alerts and things like that. So once the initial setup is complete, it's time to create your storage pool and define your RAID mode. So with a four bay NAS like this, you have quite a few options. You have RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10. Single disk is an option, though you're not going to want to use that. Um, but what you'll notice is the total usable capacity is going to change depending on the RAID mode. So I have 56 terabytes worth of hard drives in here, but if I were to pick RAID 5, for example, only 42 terabytes is usable. One of the drives or the capacity of one of the drives is used for parity and for data protection, but only one drive could fail before the RAID array is compromised. With RAID 6 or RAID 10, you only have access to half of the total storage capacity of all the drives. So instead of 56 terabytes, it's 28 terabytes, but you can have up to two drives fail before there's an issue with the array. So for my setup, I'm gonna choose RAID 6 and hit next and we'll go to the next step. So now here I have to create the volume. I'm gonna give it a description. I'm just gonna call it shared storage volume. leave it at the total capacity and click next. So the next stage is to choose your file system. Um, I'm gonna choose BTRFS. It's a, a more advanced file system than EXT4. It offers more data protection and some more advanced features. And I've never used it before, so I wanna give it a shot. So I'm going to click next here. And now it's time to actually create the volume. I'm going to click next and it should do its thing. So it's warning me that all of the data on the hard drives is going to be deleted. I don't care, the drives are blank. So I'm going to hit confirm and let this do its thing. Now with drives this big, it could take a while, so I'm not gonna film the whole process. We'll start back up once this is done. Okay, the volume creation process completed. It took me to this login screen. I'm going to log in with the password I used earlier during the setup process. And here is the main interface for the TerraMaster F4422. You configure everything right through your browser. You can see some of the hardware health here on the right and some of the control panel options and different menus over here on the left. So at this stage, we're almost ready to start using the NAS. I just wanted to run through a couple of the cool features of the TerraMaster F4422. So it has a built-in file manager. If you want to transfer stuff through the web browser, I'm not going to do that here. You also have the ability to install a bunch of applications, you know, for synchronization, auto backups. I believe there's an option to uh, run a Plex server on here. I haven't looked at it, but this is common on lots of the higher end NAS devices that are available. You can also set up auto backups, set up remote access for accessing your device from outside of your network. You have help, you have tech support. In the control panel is where the bulk of the options are though. Now in here, you can set up individual users or groups and set permissions. We could spend hours doing that. I'm going to do the simplest thing for this setup just so I can access the, the NAS quickly. I'm going to go to the file service section here. 
and I'm gonna turn on SMB CIFS for Windows. I'm just gonna tick that. My work group name is work group. I haven't changed it here. I'm gonna hit apply. This should just take a few moments to save this setting. And you'll see down in the notes to use the SMB file service, please enter the following address into Windows File Explorer. And that is the IP address of this device. So if I do that, now that this is enabled, pop this up, these are the folders that will pop up. These are the folders that were installed by default. So you have the admin folder, an app data folder, and a public folder. If I double click on that, I can now transfer stuff right into here. So for example, I'm gonna grab the TNAS shortcut, drag it over to the NAS, and now the NAS has that shortcut saved on it. Now what you can also do that makes things even easier for users on the network, if you have less tech savvy people that can't access it like this through the file server is map a network drive. So if you right click on a shared folder, provided you have the proper access, you go to map network drive, you can then pick a drive letter, hit finish, and now it's going to just pop up that shared folder like another drive. And if you go to this PC, you'll see there is now a drive here connected to public drive letter X, and that is the NAS. It is that easy to use. I think I'm gonna wrap things up right there. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And also please check out our brand new Patreon if you'd like to support hot hardware. And also check out our brand new merch store where you can grab some sweet hot hardware gear. I have a hoodie and a mug on the way for myself. Um, once again, this is Marco Cipetta for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by and learning how to set up your own personal cloud with the TerraMaster F4422.